So with Eventrine's release, I thought it would be interesting to discuss this topic, which is healers and shielders getting more utility over time and how impactful that is. Before I get started, we have our first sponsorship on this channel. I've been really picky with sponsors so far, but Honkai Staro is a game I think most of you guys already play. So when I was approached, I thought it would be a great opportunity. So be nice guys, your support means a lot. And thanks Honkai Star Rail for collaborating on this video. So the TLDR is, I think he is power creep, but sustained power creep doesn't matter much. It is a luxury. And if you have two, one for each of your teams already, then you should be pretty good for endgame content. No real need to get a third one. In fact, if you do zero cycle speed runs, you probably don't even use any sustain at all, so you won't even care. So I got Lord Child when he came out and Natasha was my only healer at the time. So getting another and a great healer like Lord Child was huge because like many of you, getting him was what enabled me to finally full clear Memory of Chaos. We just didn't have many options back when the game first came out. But the issue with Lord Child is, is if you've made it past that era of the game, or you started later on then he just isn't needed he definitely isn't bad for sure he's great it's just that now we have alternative options that do more just to summarize it Lorcha kind of heals too much for the content and what he does is overkill like in memory of chaos and pure fiction i barely even have his traces up and you just don't need that much healing in memory of chaos and pure fiction or on the other half his healing just isn't good enough like simulated universe swarm or golden gears this content one shots you and what Lorcha does is heal you after the fact when i think shields and damage reduction is more useful to tank the big damage in the first place full shrine is really popular here and honestly i even get better results using my level 70 japard now lorcha still does synergize really well with some things like this skill blessing here basically gives your team unlimited skill points but I think survivability is more important. The other issue is without Eiselens, Rosha doesn't really have any damage buffs in his kit. So he's kind of just a DPS loss. Although you could argue him being very skill point friendly and you rarely ever have to cast his skill manually. That being an indirect damage buff since you get to use more skills on your teammates which could mean more damage. But it's not really. That's where Fushuan still has her strength. Like Luocha, she is one of the older sustained units that I picked up early in Star Rail. She basically reduces the damage taken by your team and essentially redirects a portion of that damage onto herself. And she's basically tanking most of your team's damage. She also has team wide healing as long as you can consistently use the ultimate. And overall, Fushuan kind of just works everywhere. In the hardest simulated universe content, she can run into issues where bosses do AoE damage at which point she can be taking in way too much damage for even herself to tank but for the most part she's good and really popular and as for buffs she gives team wide crit rate this can go up to 12% at max which is not a joke basically all teams aside from DOT teams can appreciate that <laughs> So although I didn't pull Hua Hua because I already had two limited sustains, she is one of the best since you can argue she brings the most offensively. Her healing isn't quite as good as someone like Luo Cha's, but it's more than good enough. And like Fu Shuan giving 12% crit, Hua Hua gives 40% attack to the team at max ultimate level, which is generally not that much better than the 12% crit rate, but it is useful in DOT teams. And then on top of that, her ultimate generates energy for your team, which is a big deal offensively. It's why if you do see zero cycle speed runs, if someone was to use a sustain in those runs, usually they pick Hua Hua. Now Gallagher was released recently, and although this video is focused on five stars, even though he's a four star, he's definitely no slouch. I just wish I had more than his E1 since his E2 is so good, but alas. Gallagher reduces your enemy's attack and heals your team. He acts a bit like Luocha since teammates will heal when you attack enemies. But again, he does bring more to the table. This time Gallagher's healing does scale with break effect. So he double dips defensively and offensively. And he has a lot of self buffs in his kit. 
and if he can break fire weak enemies he can bring a lot of damage to your team break teams and dot teams can utilize him well plus based on recent relics characters and various light cones i think there are clues that we will have some sort of break effect error this year so galaga should be good in even more teams in the future so what adventuring does is he takes things even further he's basically an immortal team-wide shield tank like japard but even more consistent with his shields since you can quite easily reapply them whilst having offensive crit damage buffs and personal damage so it's safe to say Japard pro max but i don't believe you need to build him with dps relics to be strong i think the extra damage is just a bonus for him it's a lot of effort to farm for that when you could just equip him with normal tank relics and be done with it but it is something you can min max to be honest his synergy with follow-up teams is nice i am a topaz enjoyer myself but even i can accept in comparison to other limited dps's She's kind of just there, not anywhere close to being one of the strongest. And I'm sure many of you may have noticed by now, but in her dual DPS teams with Dr. Ratio, you could replace Topaz with a dedicated support like Tingyun or Pela and get even better results potentially. And those characters work in every team. So eventually scaling with follow-up teammates is good because I can consider it a buff to a weaker five star like Topaz. He also synergizes with Acheron, who is like the most popular DPS at the moment. His ultimate also inflicts a debuff on the target. And just like other preservation units, he can equip Trend of the Universal Market. This is a very popular gacha 4 star at the moment because it helps build Acheron stacks. So combining both of those, he's definitely no slouch with building up Acheron's ultimate stacks. In fact, since Acheron is so popular, this is actually very important. A lot of players pretty much use her with either a preservation character who holds Trend or a sustain who can do debuffs or you're just not using any sustain at all. In fact, five main character has been getting more popular these days due to their synergy with Acheron, although they aren't the best at keeping your team alive. Ideally, your Acheron does so much damage that you defeat enemies before your team dies. But the point is overall, you're never really gonna play some sustains in your Acheron team, which means they would need to have synergy with your other team or you don't really have much use for them at all. I would say the one team archetype that doesn't care too much about adventuring is a Kafka dot team, something like this. Unless you really need the shielding, you'd rather get the attack buffs and energy from someone like Huahua or just use any option you already have, maybe Lorcha. So overall, what I would say is if you're a newer player who hasn't yet got your two strong sustains, then as a rule of thumb, you can't really go wrong picking two newer ones and Adventurine is great as one of your picks. But if you already have two, maybe you're like me who already has Lorcha and Fushuen, or even if you've built your Bailu, then upgrades to them are honestly pretty luxury and it's your choice if you want to spend maybe 74 or more pulls on another sustain. I think that's too luxury personally, but it's up to you. Lastly, as a reminder, it is Honkai Star Rail's first anniversary now. You should be able to get 30 free pulls this patch. If you log in for seven days, you should be able to accumulate 20 limited banner passes. And you should also be able to claim a mail that gives you 1,600 Stellar Jays, which is equivalent to another 10 pulls. And these all can be used to pull adventuring if you want. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.